Hi Tango Dancer, in this video we are going to show you three very special technique exercises. This is Pablo, Sebastián Jiménez. So in this week video we have uh, Sebastián, that the, Sebastián is the Tango Salon Tango Champion uh, 2010. Uh, Sebastián has been traveling all around the world teaching and performing. We love his dancing, we love his musicality the way that he expressed the music with his dance, uh, the way that he connect with his partners in the dance. So we are very happy, Seba, to, to have you here in the studio. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. And so what, what are we going to do today? All right, so we are going to work in these three um, different exercises which can help us as a leader and as a follower. Um, tips are helping me a lot to find the right place to stay stable and more fluid and at the same time to not lose the organic movement through the dance. That is uh, one of the points. The other point is how we manage our free leg movement, which is super important. How we find the intention for the right intention for the pivot so we can feel more control in the pivot and not the pivot controlling us. And, and the last one, we are going to work in three combinations, very special combinations for, um, for many, many um, heroes or many um, steps that uh, are very famous, very well known, those steps. And we, we, can, we can work in these combinations for everything we want. As a leader and follower, we don't have this uh, only for the leaders. Super, so stay with us at the end and I will leave you now with the maestro. Exercise number one, how to control the movement of the free leg. So we are going to start first to understand the important about the alignment. When I do, when I work with my free leg, I need to be sure that my inner thighs works to be stable, to be closer. Reason is because when I am aligning my body, I can stay more stable during the free leg movement. Any free leg movement, it has an impact on our standing leg. But if we have this alignment worth it, help us to stay more stable and more comfortable with. So first thing is the alignment. When I raise up my free leg, now is my right leg here, I compress a little bit between my legs and I align my, my free leg with my standing leg, which is my left leg now. Here, it's important that you are not changing your hip position. Hip position is one of the structures that you should respect as soon as you raise your free leg. You keep it the hip so you can still on the same place. Otherwise, if you change your hip, it will affect your axis uh, position. So be aware of that hip position here. Alignment. Now that we have been reaching this part, point your toes down here. So it's more elegant, but at the same time, it will help you to, to be more precise on the movement that we are looking for. The movement that I'm looking for for my free leg today is the circular movement. I'm going to start a circular, circle movement um, clockwise here and here. So I can work left and right. The point is that your knee, your right knee in this, in this case, it's, it should keep the same place. It, sh it should not move with your foot. So from your knee down, you can see that it's moving, but your knee to your hip it stays in the same place, the same position. This is possible because of the alignment. If we don't do the alignment, or if we don't put attention on those muscles that help us to be connected, the free leg with, with the standing leg, if everything will, that happens will affect our axis position, our weight. So we are going to feel that our weight is start moving in different places in our foot which is something that we should avoid. We can work now on the other side. Put weight on your right leg now. Raise your free leg 
your left leg, align with your standing leg and move from the knee down as circle as possible. Remember, the hip should keep the same level, parallel to the floor, and the toes should look into the floor. Then you practice more and more these five minutes, 10 minutes every day, and you will feel that your muscle gets stronger and you can feel that you find the place, the right place to stay more stable during these movements. Exercise number two, how to find the correct way to pivot. So now we are going to work on pivot's technique in, in a more clear way. What do I mean about this? When we are pivoting, most of the time our weight is on our ball of the foot. But while we are doing a long pivot, we need a movement before we stay on the, our ball of the foot. So I'm making it more circular my change of weight. What do I mean about this? My axis should be in the middle part of my feet. So I, when I'm deciding to start moving around, I can decide to move to my left leg, for example. Then, little by little, I started turning to the right, moving a little bit more my weight to my ball of the foot. So I, it will look like this. If I am on the side here, you will feel change of weight. You might not see now, but you will see how I curve my body a little bit forward, but it's a natural way, not I'm not trying to go forward, I'm trying to move around. Then after doing this, I feel that my chest naturally wanted to turn to the right side. And I will follow that until the right amount, the amount that I wanted to do it. For now, it's almost 90 degrees, the dissociation that I use. When I'm ready, I feel that my hip wanted to go as much as my hip. I lift my heel and now I can find the right place to pivot. It's important that you are not changing your levels or you are not moving the hip to the side. This is super important to be more precise about how you involve your entire body to one single movement, which is for the pivot. We can do on the other side, the preparation, right? left and right. You can see that well, I'm moving my axis, I'm moving my hip, and at the end, it's moving my chest, which my chest is the one who is showing more the dissociation, but it's the other part of my body is also following that. And then here. Here's important that when you finish the, the pivot, lower your heel and keep flexible your knees. Don't lock it, because otherwise, after doing the pivot, you stop it and you straight your leg, you will attempt to uh, fall forward, all right? About the embrace, you can keep it in a circular embrace like this. As an, as an exercise, helps a lot to keep the circular embrace, which it has an, a lot to do with the, the intention that we are trying to keep it. Exercise number three, how to find more stability in the pivot. So, now we are going to work in a different combination, these elements, this embellishment that we are going to work, you can use as a leader, as a follower as well. And I will explain through um, the exercise that we are doing it. Now, that we have been working, or we, are we already done this exercise before, we combine the second exercise, which is the intention to pivot now, in this case, it's going to be to the right side. Remember that it's the opposite uh, side of your uh, free leg. So if my free leg wanted to go a little bit to the left, to align to my standing leg, my chest will turn to the right. That is very important. As you do it, the dissociation, you will start pivoting on your left leg. Don't put weight on your right leg now. It's just on your left leg. Pivot, and you will feel that there's space between your knees, it became closer. This is good, this is fine, because this is where it, it's exactly the, the moment that I lift my right foot and get closer to my, my standing left foot, which is my left foot now. As you can see, I'm doing a cross. This we call 
and Roske, for example. Here, when I'm doing the dissociation, I will pivot on my left foot, I align, I get closer to my knees, and now I will cross, so I can do it. The next movement will be the lapis. So when we do the lapis, make sure that you're not pivot anymore, so you can release your free leg to make this big circle to the direction that is the free leg moving, which is the right leg in this moment. This is very useful for even for the forward because in, for the leader, he might use quite often for the enrosques. For the follower, he might use this lapis for, you might use more for the calicitas. So it's worth it for both sides. We can use the other side if you want. Here, to the left side, turn to the left. Then pivot, cross. While you, feel, while you feel that there's more contact between your knee, you can, you can close the space between your, your um, left foot and your right foot. Yeah. So here you will be more precise while you are exit to the next movement, which is the lapis. All right, so you can practice once to the left after the circle, making the movement for the the pivot, cross, and lapis. You can see that I did 180 degrees. So I started in this direction and I will finish my pivot in the opposite direction. That will help me to know where should I stop. Here, pivot, lapis, I finished 180 degrees. It's not, you are not like you don't need to, if you want to do less or more, you can do it as much as you want. Please remember these are the exercise, individual exercise that um, it will help you to, to improve and this, um, those elements that you will see in the videos. You can use it, you can work in at home, anywhere you want and well, I hope you enjoy it. As I... Thank you very much Sebastian and we really hope this video is helpful. And uh, please, if you want to receive a new video every week, we send a new video every Saturday. So we are going to put the link below this video so you can sign up and receive our newsletter every week. And uh, especially, please keep learning and keep sharing your tango. Because the world of tango needs your embrace. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.